Um, Kat, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Aww. Thank you very much. So you're based over here in the UK now, aren't yes, you? Yes, I'm here in London now. Yes, excellent. <laughs> right, let's I am a... legally here, I have a visa, so it's all okay. <laughs> I'm not illegal. <laughs> is it true your mother is the actress who played Morticia Adams and your father was Irving Floor? <laughs> 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 um, close. close. Um, that's where I come from. That's my background. That was my household. <laughs> cool. And your background, you were, because uh, we're, we're very big in the art society on learning a craft and, mm. you know, supporters of the notion, go to art school, learn how to do it, be good at it. And you went to the Kansas City Art Institute. Well, yes. you're not in Kansas anymore, <laughs> are you? And my name's not Dorothy, either. <laughs> the young cat Toronto growing up, Diane Arbus or Cindy Sherman? Well, both. Both. I mean, I, uh, one of my earliest memories about how photography kind of touched my life and inspired me was my dad taking me to a Diane Arbus exhibition at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. So, probably Diane Armas first, Cindy Sherman second, um, Pierre Molinier. Yeah. Um, uh, I really, uh, coming into the costume textile design, Nika Shonabari, um, and then you go into, of course, the more fetishy side of things, um, John Sutcliffe and Adam Age magazine, and John Willie's Bazaar, and Exotique, and et cetera. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. Your work, you do it all yourself. You are the director, the star, the stylist, DP, the, the prop stylist, master, the yeah, makeup set artist, maker, and the producer. Everything, yeah, yeah. So I mean, so excuse me when there's an element of incredibly sophisticated selfie mm. about what you do. Mm. Selfie is now an acceptable cultural exercise. Is the selfie art? I think it can be whatever you want it to be. I mean, I think there can be something really exciting about some, you know, teenager selfie that may, on the surface, look very egotistical and ridiculous, but then maybe, looking back on it, it may be, there might be a little glimmer of something there. I mean, it's, you know, it's all in the eye of the beholder, really. So, <laughs> you know, if I'm going through and I see something and it inspires me, who gives a fuck if it's a, a selfie, like a gratuitous selfie or yeah. not, you know? If it's, if it's, Something that's going to impel me to want to see more. Jeez, yeah, Icky, and it's great. And there, there's an elephant in the room, obviously, that we've got to talk about here, which is there is a sexual charge to your work. Obviously, playing with female stereotyping, which, even as a woman, is a controversial thing to do, particularly in this heightened uh, point of society's evolution and the furor surrounding representation and the roles of women, which is getting fever pitched at the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so how do you feel as a woman participating in this? And do you think that you can justify what you do? Well, the thing is, for me, um, with this whole, all the political stuff and everything, it's funny, I don't know if it's funny, I don't know what it is, but for me, I am in it for selfish purposes, I will admit. First and foremost, I am doing this for myself. This is what I want to be doing. I have fun doing it. I love doing it. And if I weren't doing it, I would probably go crazy. If, if the internet didn't exist, I would still be doing it and probably, I don't know, maybe however many years when I'm dead, somebody would find some giant box of Polaroids full of these images of me in <laughs> bizarre situations, like, what are these? I am specifically doing it either through my own urge and need to explore my own self, or how I relate to the world around me. That well, is... <laughs> your own personal femininity is something that has been a yeah. difficult journey for you anyway. Yes, it has. Um, is that something you want to talk about, or do you want to... Yeah, that's fine. That's totally fine. Um, so in, in 2010, when I was 29, 
I was diagnosed with cervical cancer. And um, over the coming years, my, my doctor was, had told me, well, you know, you need to make a decision. Uh, either you need to have children now as soon as possible, or, you know, we need to have the hysterectomy. It was tough, like, kind of figuring out, like, you know, when you're, when you're given this ultimatum of you need to have a kid now or else, it's like, good God, what do you, uh, you know, do I want to have a kid, do I not want to have a kid? Um, that was really difficult, but it finally came to the point uh, in 2013 where I was like, okay, let's just get it done with, you know, concerned about my health first and foremost, just get it done with.